when those that are around me are, are engaged, they're bringing their best self to everything that they're doing and they're not worried about the results. They're just working hard and they can lean on me for experiences, knowledge, sounding board, just being willing to listen, even if I don't know the answer. I think that's when I know that I'm being successful and that's my why. I always look back to those personal engagements and really making sure that they are meaningful and, and valuable. Welcome to Eco Ask Why, a podcast that dives into industrial manufacturing topics and spotlights the heroes that keep America running. I'm your host, Chris Granger, and on this podcast, we do not cover the latest features and benefits on products that come to market. Instead, we focus on advice and insight from the top minds of industry because people and ideas will be how America remains number one in manufacturing in the world. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero conversation. I'm very excited to sit down with Nepal Sahota, who is the Director of Industry Sales at Rockwell Automation. So welcome, Nepal. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Looking forward to the conversation. No doubt. Absolutely. Very excited. And now you're located in, in where again? In California. I'm in Northern California near the uh, Napa Valley area. Oh, okay. Okay. Looking forward to this conversation with you all the way out in California. And we love to get these started just by learning more of, about the guests and about, about their personal journey. So what can you share with us? Yeah, always interesting to talk about yourself. I've always told people when I do this, when I introduce myself, that I'm a first generation Asian Indian here in America. So my parents both got a high school level education, one here in America and one in India. And they immigrated over here in the late 70s. And, and it's interesting to bring that up because a lot of what you're going to hear, the way I work and things I do, you know, they work those hard nine to five jobs, even over time to, to put three kids through school. And they didn't have a large education to work off of. So a lot of what we learned and did was kind of on our own. We had to learn on the fly. We had to learn on our own. There wasn't an internet to leverage at that point to, to, to figure out some questions. And so we just had to get things done. And it's interesting because I bring that up as the school I went to was Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. And, and it, their motto was learn by doing, which now when I self-reflect on it, it's like, oh, no wonder I really thought about that school and enjoyed going there because how I worked or how I even grew up is you just learn by doing and figure it out and then go from there. So I got my start in this industry with Siemens back in the late 90s and got an opportunity to work with them for about 11-ish years. Got to take on multiple roles and opportunities from an account manager to a business development manager to a, a sales manager there. So I learned a lot there and that's where I cut my teeth in the industry part of it. I then got an opportunity to work for a couple of years at a local Bay Area integrator. So I really got to learn about working for a smaller company, being able to make changes uh, very quickly, nimbly, quick, agilely, um, and then being able to leverage that into learning about an industry and background that I just didn't have as much knowledge about. And I've now been at Rockwell for nine and a half years. I started out as an account manager, took on a sales manager role. And then just recently here over the last three years, I've been in a, my present role, which is a director of sales roles for the Western part of the United States, where I got the experience now to start managing managers and working on a broader team and a broader responsibility of the organization as well. So today I, I am a, a director of industry sales for the Western part of the United States, um, trying to work on all the, the key things that our manufacturing companies are looking for our help on. Okay. Well, thank you for walking us through that. So as part of your over that Western United States, what are some of the challenges that you see out there that from your, the industries that you're serving and supporting? Yeah, we cover everything from at least my visibility from the Dakotas all the way over to Alaska and Hawaii to give a frame of reference. And when you look at that landscape, 
you've got everything from oil and gas to food and beverage to electric vehicle startups and and many other industries as well. You know, some of the biggest challenges we see coming is just where is our country as a whole going to rely on energy going forward and the impact that's going to have on the industries that we cover. Will we be seeing more startup companies in electric vehicle as we depend maybe less on oil or does we need to depend more on oil or not? What does it mean with the, all the things that are happening with travel that's going on with COVID right now? So where does the aerospace industry look like five to 10 years from now? Is it looking the same? Is it going to be more regional, smaller players? Because there's just not a need for the bigger guys as maybe people travel differently going forward. What's packaging and food going to look like? Is everything going to be done by Amazon or Walmart and dropped at your doorstep because no one's going to be going to retail or, or to grocery stores anymore? Those are those key things. And so when you then lump those up and say, so what does our workforce look like going forward? How do they need to be thinking about looking like going forward? What does our customers' workforce look like going forward? Is everyone going to be just pounding behind computers for the rest of their lives now going forward? These are all those challenges that we're seeing out there in the industry that we're trying to get our head wrapped around to develop. Hey, so what do we do and how do we go after this thing and really be successful as a company going in the next five to 10 years? Wow. That's a, that's a lot of, of topics that, that you really are in front of you, but it sounds like it's also it's challenging but it sounds like it's, it's going to be pretty exciting, too, as, as things evolve and you're in the midst of so many different areas. If nothing else, it's not going to be boring. Right. Uh, it'll, definitely, it'll definitely challenge people to maybe get uncomfortable and maybe have to change themselves, maybe even have to brand themselves a little bit differently. So if you're someone that enjoys being challenged, uncomfortable, having some fun and seeing what happens if you try something differently, you're probably going to enjoy the next five to 10 years. If you're not that person, these next five to 10 years might be very rough. That's right. That's to give you a little bumpy. That's right. Yeah, now, absolutely. You mentioned that your territory really caught me uh, a couple of things you said that I want, I just wanted to clarify. Ma mainly, I want to clarify for my wife. So, yeah. So, did you say you're over Alaska and Hawaii, too? Yes, we've got that as part of uh, the territories in the western part of the United States. Don't let her know because we honeymooned to Hawaii and I fell in love with it. So do you get to go out to, and she's been to Alaska. She's trying to get me to go there. Do you get to go to those regions very often? No, I have not been to Hawaii since I've had this role in the last three years. I did get an opportunity to go to Alaska. We had an event that was up there. A year and a half ago, two years ago, that I felt was a great opportunity for me to go meet customers and and the and some team members that we have up there, and the whole aspect of it still being light outside at 11:30 at night just blew my mind. Just was something brand new for me. I did not know what to expect. I was in my hotel room just looking out, going, "This is eerie. This is weird. <laughs> right, right. This just is just does not feel normal at all." And so I've gotten an opportunity to travel out there once, and would love to go back out there. And, and oftentimes, what ends up happening is, at least for this role, you end up going, flying into an airport, and then going to a visit, and then right back to an airport. So a lot of my quote unquote knowledge is based on what I hear around the airport more right. than I hit around the sights and sounds of the cities and everything else. I got you. I got you. Well, yeah, that Alaska, that, that sounds like that was, uh, t probably took a while to get used to, no doubt. Oh yeah. Very fun. Very fun. So how about the, the listener out there who wants to come in the industry? They want to figure out how any advice you'd offer up? When they, especially if someone's wanting to enter this industry or just enter this industry, the, <laughs> The number one advice I have or the, the aha moment I remember at some point when I joined Rockwell is how small this industry is. It's not that big. As much as we think it's big and, and pure numbers tell us it's big, you would be surprised at how many people stay in this industry, how many people move around in this industry, and how small it is when you really look into it and understand it a little bit more. And so the reason I bring that up is if someone's looking to break in this industry, it's great to get into those associations. It's great to get into networking with companies and customers and your own organization, because I think if you spent time doing those type of things and getting to meet as many people, you will find that they naturally will move around such that you will get to learn a lot as they move around and where they go and what they do 
to really understand more about this industry, maybe even have more opportunities for themselves that they didn't even think about before. Um, number two, I, I think we're living in an age that technology is so huge in this industry. I, I'd encourage everyone to understand what artificial intelligence means going forward, what analytics means, what software means, because those things are becoming bigger and bigger deals. And so if someone's looking to enter this industry, they should really go spend a little bit of time on what those type of applications and information and softwares or whatever the right word may be is going to become over the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, because they'll get a better sense of where this industry is going and, and how to really get involved in understanding it going forward. No doubt. Absolutely. When you look forward to the future, Nepal, what gets you excited? So go to your right. Technology is changing rapidly. So just curious on your take uh, on what excites you. What excites me is really the ability that there's bigger impact that can be made into how people are doing work than ever before. And what I mean by that is there are a lot of companies that have these sustainability goals, the safety goals, these other goals that are pretty lofty goals. And sometimes you wonder, can I really make an impact into that? The more and more I'm staring at this and the more and more I'm seeing how things are going in the future, I do actually think those things can be impacted a lot more than maybe one may have thought about if they only thought about it from a PLC, HMI drives perspective. And that's exciting that you can really sit down with someone and explain the overall benefits that it brings to a company and what it could mean for them. And that might, even for that person who's trying to, to get involved in the industry, give them more motivation around why they're doing what they're doing to begin with. And I've seen some people here within Rockwell that have taken on sustainability responsibilities, safety responsibilities that came from sales. And it's because they truly are helping the company move down a path. And then if they're, if they're right, they can use that to help other companies go do the same thing as well. And so that to me, is very exciting. I, I think most of our manufacturing companies, even ourselves, I, I feel are, are getting even more tightly intertwined, sorry, intertwined as a whole, such that everyone knows what everything's got going on. And I think there's more opportunities because of that to really help make a bigger difference. No doubt. Absolutely. Great stuff. And when we sit back and you think the things that have helped you and that you get excited about, are there any resources that, that have helped you? Because we're trying to, to guide people with recommendations as well. So anything stand out? The first thing I would tell people before they even worry about resources is to go spend time getting to know as many people in your organization. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be, I think we'd all be surprised on how many resources are already living and breathing within the organization before we even go look for other organizations to help us. And, and I think the more you network within your organization and learn from others might be, first of all, how you get better, learn more, do some things as well. The second piece I, I would encourage for everyone to be thinking about is really spending time learning their own and emotional intelligence piece, really understanding how they work with others and how they make others feel and engage with them. Because I think as we all get to in this space, that's going to be this virtual world, how you interact with people is going to become even more important than it's ever been because it's easy to type a text or a Skype or a Teams and, and, and just write something. It's different to have a conversation with someone and really being able to talk empathetically with them and doing some things. So anyone that goes and researches some of that stuff will find plenty of data and information that's out there. And there's plenty of stuff on artificial intelligence. I think if anyone just looks some stuff up, if they go spend some time, whether it's in like our website or just in general in the marketplace, they'll see plenty of information that's out there where they probably get a step up versus anyone else out there and learning what that means and what it could do. Google's a wonderful thing, and you could find so much out there on, on a lot of these topics. So thank you for bringing that insight for the listeners as well. And I love on these episodes to talk about mentors and give you give the guest a chance to give recognition to people who've helped them in their career, or even maybe talk yeah. about how you are able to mentor people now and help them and guide them. You know, what what that looks like. Anything you'd like to share there? 
Yes, I have a great mentor in, in this. Or I've got a few mentors in this organization, but I'll speak to one here for, for a minute or two. Suji Chan is our CTO, and I've had the, the pleasure of getting to know him from a personal and professional perspective. And the reason I really enjoy having the conversations with him, as he eloquently points out, he goes, Paul, there's so many things you can go do to test yourself. There's so many things you can do to analyze yourself. There's so many assessments, reports, all these type of things. He goes, at the end of the day, you just have to know who you are and you have to be willing to be proud about that, be positive about that and use that as the main thing that you have that brings value of you compared to everyone else. And when you hear an executive of a company say that and say it in such a very easy way of having a dialogue, there's just something about that conversation that I've always enjoyed of having with him. He he brings such a clarity and simplicity to the way he dialogues things. And and he's part of a $7 billion company and he's a CTO. So it's not like the guy can't be handling situations it just makes it so easy to have a conversation and share his practices that it's just amazing walking out of there every time. And I've always walked away going, I learned something and I felt better about myself every single time. Wow. And so I use that whenever I'm dealing with people in general, even if I'm not mentoring them, to try to make them feel better, that they learned something to begin with. And, and if I can do that for people that officially consider me a mentor, even better. And Suji to me is the epitome of what I would point to to say, that's what a mentor should look like. Helps you, helps you learn, makes you feel better, and makes you want to even go do more when you leave that room. Right, no doubt. And if you don't have that in your career right now and you're listening, um, just be intentional, search, start asking questions. And it's really important to have, you know, that type of people that can speak into your life. So people want to help others. People are positive and want to do other things to help others. And so if you don't go ask, they're, they're going to, they're not going to be willing to do that. They're not going to just be thinking to go do that. And so whoever you are out there, if, if you're looking for one person, just go ahead and ask. Right. So go ask your manager, go ask your peer, go talk to someone. You'd be surprised how many people want to help. I'm going to try to ask this question the right way, Nepal. So you have the title of director of industry sales mm-hmm. and people may have certain perceptions when they see that sales title and they, they may not all be positive. So if there, if you had a, a chance to debunk some myths around what you do in, in sales in general, what would that be? <laughs> so my kids still think I'm a car salesman. They still don't know what the heck I do um, because I keep telling them I'm in sales. And they're like, and then the follow-up now is, oh, so you're like Michael Scott. So that's our now follow-up to it as well. In our space and what we do, we're problem solvers. That's what we're trying to do. Someone has an issue that they're trying to solve, whatever it may be. It could be as small as in I'm trying to get this conveyor going faster, or it can be as complex as I'm trying to get more production through my entire manufacturing facility. That's what I do. That's I wake up and my team wakes up saying, hey, someone's got some kind of issue that we know we can solve and we can do and we can help them be better. Let's go help them. Let's go talk to them. Let's go figure it out. Let's go really understand it. And let's go see if we can help them solve that issue. That's what we really do. That that If I could change my title, it'd be either problem solver or as I've always tried to change it to master of the universe because right. I just always loved E-Man when I was a kid. So. <laughs> That's right. We had a guest in manufacturing on and we recorded with, and he said he's looking for a, a customer advocate. And I thought that was Mm -hmm. an interesting title. He said, I'd like for you guys in uh, sales to change your titles to customer advocates because that's what I'm looking for as an end user is somebody that's going to help me understand my problems, help me understand how to sell this internally up to get the approval and things. I just thought that was an interesting take. I think that's actually probably the best title you can give to someone because, again, problem solver makes it seem okay. So if I got a leak in my faucet, are you going to solve that? But if you talk about it from a customer advocate, think about it this way. If you're in Amazon right now and you're trying to do something, that's all they think about is, hey, do you need something? Here, we got it. If you don't need it, or if you're having an issue with it, hey, we'll solve that. I mean, they're just customer advocates. That's what they're doing. That's right. 
So I, I got one more question about work, Nirvana, mm-hmm. and then we'll get off the work path and have some fun uh, outside of work. So when you're in that moment, things are really going well. You, you, you feel like you're doing the work that you enjoy the most. You're really feeling joy and happiness and your feel, uh, fulfillment. What are you doing in those moments? Celebrating successes. When those situations come up, if you're not willing to to high five and let the person know that they're doing a great job and letting others know that's exactly the impact we're trying to make, then you're doing a disservice to them. And to me, you're missing out on an opportunity to really make it something even more meaningful. That's what feels really good. When things are going well is then when I'm picking up the phone and or texting or emailing and really letting someone know that was awesome, that's great. That's fun. That's exciting. And then using that to broadcast and letting people know this is what it looks like when we're all having some fun and enjoying what we're doing. And so uh, we've spent a lot of time trying to focus recognition and we just continue to focus on that as a management team because that's what brings a lot of excitement to the, to the table. That's great. Can't forget to celebrate. This is wonderful that yeah. you see that is so important and that, that brings you so much happiness. There's plenty of, there's plenty of negativity out there if someone wants to go look for that. So I'd rather go focus on something else. Oh yeah. There's no shortage of negativity, but that's for sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so how about, let's get outside of work for a little bit. What, what do you enjoy for fun? Any hobbies? So I like, coaching for a while coached a lot of my kids sports i actually even at one point put a travel basketball team together for my son because they were getting to a point that playing recreational wasn't challenging and i've always enjoyed that element of it Um, i've taken a hiatus on that my kids have gotten old enough that they don't want dad around which i don't blame them if i was in their shoes they'd probably say the same exact thing but i may want to pick that back up once they're done with their little mini careers whatever that looks like just to be able to go do more of that i enjoy playing basketball myself i still play every sunday morning unfortunately with covid it's been all uh, outdoors here recently, which hasn't been as fun, but I still enjoy doing that. Just something about the game, something about the team part of it, something about winning uh, in a game where it's five people trying to work together. Just always been fun in regards to that. I'm not going to call this a hobby just yet. I am starting to golf once a month with some family members. The reason I don't bring it up as a hobby, it's probably more of a hobby that I get to go out with them. But if anyone watches my golf game, they know that there's no way that could be a hobby right. um, because it's that bad. And so I, I don't mind enjoying that. And then, uh, you know, hey, as much time as I can possibly spend that's uh, meaningful. We spend it watching some movies and TV shows as a family and doing some stuff. Um, but I, I don't consider that a hobby. That's just fun things for me to do, just yeah. being able to want to hang out with a family and watch Amazing Race or whatever we're deciding to watch as a family. Well, I mean, that, that's what we're all about at Eco is, is family. So what can you share with us about your family? Yeah. So happily married for 18 years now. We've got a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old. So we've got a high schooler and an eighth grader. Two smart kids. They know what they got going on. They know they're able to do what they need to get done. And if not, they'll Google it and figure it out. And so can't be more proud of them. And my wife and I, 18 years, we've gone through highs and lows, but we've always enjoyed being around each other and trusting each other on a daily basis. We try to have some fun. My wife is very family centric. Her family lives all nearby. So we get to see my nieces and nephews from that side quite a bit. And yeah, we just try to spend time whenever possible. You know, now with COVID, we're all spending time all the time, but we're trying to make most of it and enjoying it. Okay. So you have some family that's close to you right there in proximity? Yeah, my wife's family lives really close by. And my family actually doesn't live more than an hour radius away, hour and a half radius away as well. So we can always see them. That's been a benefit of mine here and where I've lived. Uh, my extended family have all within a three and a half hour radius. My wife's extended family is all within an hour radius. So worst comes to worst, everyone within a few hours could all be together and enjoying each other's company. That's great. That's wonderful that you have that, that close, that's closeness available. So yeah. good stuff. So I've started in Nepal doing in, in the hero conversations, a lightning round. And this is just fun. It can be one word answers. It could be sentences, whatever you want. Just trying to get through some questions and just learn a little bit more about who you are for our listeners. So you, you good with that? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's just start off with what it, I, I always start with a softy. So how about just favorite food? It's going to fall under the whole Mexican realm. Um, so whether it's burritos, tacos, whatever it may be, I lived on probably Taco Bell too much during college, but even without Taco Bell, there's plenty of burrito places that I've enjoyed. And so if I had that one food that I enjoy, anything under that Mexican realm would always be my favorite. Oh, we are, we are singing the same song, my friend. That is that's yeah. it. I love it. I love it. So how about uh, favorite adult beverage? Favorite adult beverage. I am going to have to pick that if I had one that I had to do, Sierra Nevada would be the one adult beverage. That was one of the first craft beers that was ever out there when I was going through college. And if I just had to pick that one craft beer, I'd always take a Sierra Nevada over anything else. All right. That sounds good. So how about cats or dogs? A dog. So my daughter for the longest time wanted a dog and we got her one a few years ago. He's turning out to be possibly my best friend or vice versa, depending on who you ask. <laughs> right. I'm the one who's usually walking and talking and dealing with it. So Chico is the fifth, uh, fifth family member that I didn't bring up earlier. Sorry, Chico, if you're listening. He, uh, yeah, so he's a, a black lab, three years old, and just has an abundance of energy that he, he gets. I can go on a run, a walk, and he's still done afterwards and say, okay, so what's next? I don't have energy for you, bud. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, how about a destination or a vacation destination that you'd like to go to? There's not one uh, specific one. I think the best best vacations, destinations, is when just the four of us go somewhere. We've gone, the four of us being my wife and kids, we've gone from San Diego to New York and a few other places. And when it's just the four of us, we're able to get to see a lot, travel around, get to can do our own thing. And so we've just enjoyed doing that. We've, we've had a chance to go to England and India together as well. And, and just anything we do together, uh, I don't have a one. Uh, I just like getting to destinations okay. and just seeing everything very cool and, and last one this is for your wife uh date night if you have to pick one thing or if you have to pick a, a, a range of date night what are you going where are you doing if i had to arrange it we'd be going out somewhere just grabbing dinner nothing has to be fancy uh, spending some time and then heading home and then watching a, a movie or a show together and keeping it simple uh, doesn't have to be extraordinary at all just Getting out to do something is perfectly fine, even if it's just for an hour. Just that quality time together. Yep, just a, just a little bit of time. We've got the luxury with so much family that we've got flexibility. We can pull that off. So it's always nice once in a while to go do that. That's great. That's great. This is this has been a lot of fun. We've got to know you, Nurpal, through this conversation. And we always wrap these com the these episodes up with the why on Eco Ask Why. And this is really just talking about your passion, what drives you. So if someone's to come to was to come up to you and want to know what your why is, how would you answer that? Yeah, it's funny because I just worked on this. And when those that are around me are, are engaged, they're bringing their best self to everything that they're doing. And they're not worried about the results. They're just working hard. And they can lean on me for experiences, knowledge, sounding board, just being willing to listen, even if I don't know the answer. I think that's when I know that I'm, being successful. And that's my why. I always look back to those personal engagements and really making sure that they are meaningful and, and valuable and doing some stuff. Probably don't do it enough with my own family as much as I do with, you know, workers, but that's because uh, I'm probably thinking of too many other things when I'm dealing with just the personal side of it. But anything I can do to, to help people bring their best self and, and use me on whatever way they can to do that, that that'd be my why. I love it. It's, that's a wonderful why. And Nurpal, I cannot thank you enough for opening up and being so honest for our listeners and just a wonderful story, great accomplishments. And thank you so much for being a guest on Eco Ask Why. Chris, to you and Adam and the team that have put this together, congratulations on a, a great idea, a great format and style that you guys are putting together and keep up the good work. It's powerful, it's impactful, and, uh, and I enjoy it. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, 
visit ecosy.com. That's E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.